LaVoy? Uh, I'm doing this for my kids. I have 20 grandkids and uh, daughters and sons. I want them to be free. I want our Constitution to be upheld in its original intent. I want freedom to be restored to our country. And uh, uh, unfortunately, our political class does not have the will. They're entrenched and they won't do it. So here in this little place, we'll uphold the Constitution. We'll return these resources to the people. It belongs to the people of Harney County, these, these, these good folks. And so I'll stand here uh, with my friends. We plan on hurting no one. We're only restoring freedom, liberties, so that these good people can use their lands and resources again. And that is why we're here. The America that I love. The America of Thomas Jefferson, Sam Adams, and our father's revolution. The America of George Washington, the America of the United States Constitution. Hey, how you doing, Eamon? Good, how you doing? <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, welcome to my life. I know how Ed Asner feels now. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, here we go. This is a lot of fun. Um, well, we're just we're just throwing this together. This is kind of a press release uh, and an action alert for folks out there. And um, I've got Ammon Bundy uh, on on air with us right now. And we're uh, what we're discussing is is what a safety committee is and what the people of Harney County, Oregon, have done. And uh, to give a little bit of background, if you people haven't been on top of this is that there was uh, a family called the Harmons. And Hammond, the, Hammond. Was it the Hammonds? I'm sorry. Hammond, yeah. Why do I do that? The Hammonds, I yeah, I know. The Hammonds were uh, put through the ringer as far as the laws go, and there was a redress of grievances that exposed massive criminality within the court systems. How many, uh, how many signatures did you finally get on that redress of grievance there, Hammond? Well, we had uh, conservative ladies. Uh, over a hundred thousand, and and it, many of those signatures were from the people and his neighbors in the county. Yeah, most of the signatures came from within the state of Oregon and and uh, Harney County. Okay, so we're sitting here, and I've looked at some of them, and and it's a uh, long let me, list. Let me rephrase that because I said most. Um, more more people signed it from the state of Oregon and Harney County than any other state or any other county. Correct. But there was people that signed it from every state of the Union, including Hawaii and Alaska. Yeah, and um, uh, so here we sit, just like our founding fathers, and we're going back in time to look at how they presented uh, illegal acts that were committed to, to them by the officials of the day. And how did they do that? They did it with a committee of safety to protect the jurors so that the findings of the court can be applied. Is that not correct? That is correct. That oh. is how they did it. Okay. They just committed to safety. The safety committee, and they had other committees for communication. I, uh, nowadays, I guess a modern form would be the uh, press committee, you know. Uh. <laughs> yeah, they had committees of cor uh, correspondence, committees of of uh, safety and committees of preparedness, but they they all had functions uh, to bring about the safety and, and defense of the people. Well, I think uh, so. What everybody's asking me is um, the safety committee, the committee of safety, I should say, in Harney County. We put the video up. It was a little long. Uh, but why don't you do a recap of what exactly the people of that county has have done? Well, what we did, because we were concerned about what was happening to the Hammonds, we were also concerned about what is what's happening to the rest of the county. Um, give you an example, Harney County was in the 80s, well, all through the 50s, 60s, 70s, or excuse me, 50s, 60s, 70s, and the 80s, Harney County was the most wealthy county in the state, meaning they had the highest income of any other county in the state of Oregon. Um, now, Harney County is the poorest county in the state, uh, and they're $22,000 under the national average, income average. 
At one time, they were well above the national income average. Um, and so we looked into what that what was happening to the Hammonds, but also what was happening to Harney County. And basically, it's very simple. Federal government has gone in there, uh, taken over their land and resources, and uh, restricted the use of it, and has put the county in, in basically destroyed the forestry industry and the ranching industry, which is what Harney County relies upon, and has destroyed the economy there. Um, well. And so we called a town meeting together, and we uh, published it as much as possible in the paper and flyers and, and uh, posted it on uh, uh, the uh, businesses there and communicated it for a couple of weeks. And uh, when we had that meeting, we informed people of what was happening to the Hammonds, why their county was experiencing such economic uh, depression, and they began to have a desire to ask. And they asked, well, what do we do about it? What can we do about it? Um, because our, our local county governments and our states are not willing to do anything about this. And so we presented to them, uh, they can act by forming a committee of safety. And that committee is a governmental body that acts uh, with the authority of the people when the existing government is not willing to act. And um, they decided by vote that they did want to form a committee. It was a unanimous decision that they did want to form a committee. Or excuse me, I take that back. That that decision was not unanimous. It was about an 80-20 for forming a committee. Um, and then we asked for nominations. They began to nominate committee members, uh, and they nominated seven committee members. Um, each of those committee members were given the opportunity to accept or decline the position. All of them accepted it. And then uh, they voted on each one of them separately. And they voted unanimously to, uh, to place each one of these individuals in, uh, in the committee. It seems to me that, you know, this is a long train of abuse. We have seen milk producers attack, people with chickens and whatever. Uh, uh, they want to own everything. It's not enough to... To own our our dollar bills, it's they've just destroyed and wrecked what was once the late great United States, and and you know folks, the reason uh, uh, Amon's on here and on other programs is because he cares about your children. He cares about their future. You know, I seen your your children running around. What kind of future do they have right now, at the present state of affairs that we have? They if. If they do not have the ability to have, and, and if you will, capitalize on their ideas, um, if they are restricted from the use of the land, property, from the resources, they do not have a future. Uh, there's only two. There's only two options that we face, and that is one that we set these things straight or we just become slaves and uh, I'm, I'm just not willing to turn my children's futures over to uh, the federal government to men and women who have, have uh, wicked desires to control man and I'm just not I'm just not willing to do that. And the best way to combat that is is through making sure that the land and resources are not controlled by a central government. Ultimately the way our constitution was envisioned and the United States was envisioned is that it starts local and grows out from there. And folks, the safety committees, the committees of safety, uh, were all put in place to um, to have a power of enforcement for the court, and the court is the public. Why do you think there's jurors? 
The reason there is a jury is because that goes way back to the Magna Carta. That goes way back to the foundation of this nation, and they still have to hold to loyalty to the to 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 uh, the jury system itself. And the people within a county are really the ultimate power above anyone. And so, yeah, that's what I has, see. The county has everything it needs to prosper, uh, to ensure safety, to um, to work their problems out. They have everything they need to do that. The states are only there to protect, the counties are there to protect the people and the people control the county. The states are there to protect the counties and the federal government is supposed to be there to protect the states from the outside world. There never is room and never was the design for the federal government to come down into the people's lives, into the counties and control them. That was never the design. And, and the federal government is failing to defend the states from the outside world because they've turned their sights on the people and, their, and, their, and the very things that generate the wealth and prosperity for, for, for individuals. They've seen that, hey, that's where, the, that's where the wealth is, and that's where we need to go after in order to gain wealth so that we can gain more power. And... It's done through uh, controlling the land and the resources, and they've had to come down into the counties, the state and the counties, to do it. And the county and the states have been too weak, for many reasons, to say no and to be that check and balance. Okay. And so this committee is being formed by the people to say no and and to mean it and and to be willing to stay strong in making sure that the federal government leaves the county and allows the people to begin to get back on their feet. Well, and, uh, and all that see, of, all there's that already been approached to the sheriff, and the sheriff and you had a brief uh, conversation, and he's supposed to be representing the people but he sided with the federal government this seems obvious at this point to the point that he girthed himself against those ranchers and those ranchers that had not communicated any threats to him but he felt necessary to bring in um, more people to harm the people of that county you know I'm looking at it like this and and we want to make this a brief call to action is what we really need uh, folks there's very few cases of precedence that are so clear and glaring as this. And uh, there's, very, there's quite a few things that you can do. One of them, you can get on the social media and, and alert everyone. But we're also looking for uh, men of love and heart, protectors of the, their communities, to respond, to come out, out to uh, Harney County uh, on the 2nd. And could you give that information of where they can go, uh, where it's at, and... Um, and the times well first I want I want to and those that have listened and know who I am know that I haven't asked very much of very many people but I'm asking now if you want to make a difference to come to Harney County come to Burns on the 2nd of January and make a stand. And I'm asking that very clearly, very simply, and for you to to listen in in the ways that you know you should and come out. Um, we will be assembling at noon at the Safeway in Burns, Oregon. Okay. Uh, folks, I'm 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 going to speak to the uh, men that work behind the thin blue line and the women, and all the and all the other people within this nation, and w and especially in this region, through Idaho and Oregon and Arizona and Nevada and uh, up up in Montana and Washington, you know, you all responded to the Bundy's plight because of a because it hit home. That, that that was something that's necessary. And what we're looking for is you to do the same thing. 
But this one is even more important because now they're charging people with terrorism where there is no terrorism. And I dare say that the real terrorism is this federal government. And if we don't stand up now and say no, and that's all it'll take, it'll be peaceful. But if we don't say no now, folks, Katie, bar the door because the next time they're going to girth themselves and they will respond violently to you no matter what you have to say. And... Um, you know, a lot of uh, peoples of different nations have experienced this very same treason and totalitarian measures, and millions died. So it's up to you. You say you're an American citizen. Well, I think it's time that uh, this is a gut check time for the real men and women of this nation. You so, know. Michael, I just want to put this in perspective, and then I'll let you go. Okay. And that is... If we do not, if we allow this to happen, and we allow this precedent to set, the abuses that have gone on will go on again, and you just mentioned that. But I want to list those abuses. If we allow this to go on, our federal government will have a free ticket to try to, to put somebody in jeopardy twice, to commit double jeopardy, because that's certainly what's happened. They will have permission to go directly and prosecute individuals um, who haven't even committed a crime. They will uh, be able to indict somebody without properly forming a grand jury or without even using a grand jury at, at all. They will be able to sentence them uh, twice to a cruel and unusual punishment. They will be able to gain more control over the land and resources without jurisdiction. And the list goes on and on and on. This is what will happen if we allow this case to set a precedent. And as you know, this is not Harney County doing this. This is not the state of Oregon doing this. This is our federal government doing it in a federal court. So it affects every individual across these United States. And we cannot allow this to set a precedent. Uh, it is too, too risky. There's too much to lose. And with that being said, I'd just like to close up here and I'll, I'll get off the phone. Okay. Eamon, I really appreciate your heart and dedication. And uh, the light of love and light of truth be with you. And uh, rest assured, many... Many men and women across this nation really appreciate your sacrifice because I, we all know that this has been hard on your family. And um, um, we're here for you, and um, I want to thank you, and we will be talking soon. Thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate it. Have okay. a good evening. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. You know, I've got to say this much more just to in closing. We're sitting here right now complaining. Whether it's Obama, or it was Bush, or any of these other people that's come in on the scenes, but ultimately it's your responsibility in your community of what kind of world you want to live in. And uh, what's necessary out there isn't a bunch of people with BDUs or anything else, but people that care, that are willing to stand up and take the risk of a bully that may try to slap you down because, you know, I don't like a bully. And the government, federal government has become a bully. So if, if you are what you say you are, and that you do care about this nation, this is the one chance that you have to make a difference and be a part of something that's greater than yourself. And it's time to make a stand. It's time to head, if you can, to Harney County, to Burns, Oregon, at the Safeway, and be there. We will have all the information you need on our website and force multiply it. Go to the Voice of Idaho, uh, tvoinews.com. Check us out on Facebook. Um, and we'll be keeping you informed on everything, and I will be on the scenes. Um, I want to thank you all for tuning in, and uh, let's all pray about this.